Welcome to Lesson 10 of Learn to Read Ancient Sumerian. In this video, we're going to take a look at compound verbs. Be sure to check out the vocabulary, exercises, and cuneiform signs at the end of the video. Like, subscribe, come along for the ride. Sometimes in English, we find that forming a verb with a single word is not enough to say exactly what we mean. In these cases, we often add another word to the verb, like an adjective, adverb, or even a noun, to complement the verb. For example, when I complete the draft of my Learn to Read Sumerian book, I will give it to someone, my brilliant wife, to read and to edit. That person will proofread my manuscript. The word read is not enough to specify what that person will do with my manuscript. Because a preliminary or trial version of a document is known as a proof, we add the word proof to the verb read to make a type of compound verb. Other examples include color code, daydream, and kickstart. Sumerian does something similar, as they will often combine a verb and a noun, which functions as a direct object of the verb. Let me give you some examples, many of which you've already learned. Gu thri detu, to speak, literally, to pour out detu, the voice, gu thri. Iginyar, to look at, literally, to place the eye. Sang il tu, to raise the head. Sang gid tu, to become angry, literally, to lengthen the forehead. Notice that in each of these examples, there is a verbal component Tattoo, nyar, iltu, gidtu, and a noun that is the direct object of that verb. Gu thri, igi, song. In other words, the first part of the compound verb, the noun, will always be the object of the verbal component, and never the subject or agent. For example, igi nyar will never be understood as the I subject sets X. It will always be the agent sets the I object. We have learned that direct objects in Sumerian sentences have no specific marks to identify them as direct objects. We say that they are marked with a zero. Thus, if we were to normalize the sentence lugal a, gu thri, b2 in de tu, the king spoke, we would write it like this. The e on lugal represents the ergative, marking it as the agent. The zero on gu three is the mark of the direct object, which is paralleled in the verb with zero. B2 is the conjugation prefix. The N before de tu is the marker for the third person agent, cross-referencing the ergative E. De tu is the verbal part of the compound verb. At this point, most or all of the analysis above should make sense to you. But this leads to a slight complication. What do you do if your compound verb itself needs a direct object? We call that the oblique object. For example, the compound verb igi do eight means to look at. How do they mark the direct object of a verb that already has a direct object in it? There are generally three ways that Sumerian marks this oblique object. One, they will use the locative terminative e. Two, they'll use the locative a, or three, they won't mark it at all. For example, nyeshchin a, shu ba'an ti, he received wine. Er tu ra, shu ba'an ti, he received his tears. Dub, shu ba'an ti, he received the tablet. Compound verbs can also appear in a construction with the verbs ak, to do, and do 11 to say. The construction usually looks like this. A tu ki us tu mu ak a. He will firmly establish the house. From this example, we notice several things. First, the verb ak appears in the verbal chain, while the compound verb ki us tu comes directly before the verbal chain. The meaning of this verb has not changed, but instead of writing the verb, ki mu us tu a, 
They used an auxiliary verb, ak, in the verbal chain. As noted above, the auxiliary verb that is written in the verbal chain can appear either as ak or do 11. Lal 3, honey or syrup. Siskor 2, prayer, offering. Tug to Pala three, a Pala garment. Lipish, inner body, heart, or anger. Sach to, a pig. Nar, musician. Me tesh to, praise. Ni to, the second meaning, self. Mush, snake. Me too, praise. Sag nine, to be good, beautiful. Mo, star or to shine. Sa, meaning one. Sinew, tendon, string of an instrument. Sa meaning two, a net. Ne three, strength or force. Mir, to be angry. Sha three, chul two, to be happy. And finally, pa, a three, to cause to appear. The exercises. Or sang, sha three, nu, chul tu. Gu three, de tu a, mash tu a, shu, e three, gid tu. Mash tu a ni, e three, sag nine. Lugal a, siskor tu ra na. Shu ba an ti. Nin e nam mach a ni pa a three b two in ak. The signs for lesson ten. Ib me la two dish. Shum tu, in, tu, pi.